Hey everyone, uh, two things before we start. Yes, I'm still a little bit under the weather, I'm sure you can tell, um, but I'm going to try and push through this video and possibly the next video. This video will be um, some more SCPs. Now, a lot of you were confused as to what an SCP actually is, so I'm going to try and explain it as quickly and as easily as possible. SCP stands for Secure, Contain, Protect, and the SCP Foundation is an online forum which contains a collection of entries written by anonymous users. Think of it as the Internet's Area 51, but you have access to all of the files and all of the things that are in there. That's the easiest way I can put it. It's almost like a a look into a fictional Area 51 and what is held there and the type of tests and <clears throat> data that can be found there. I hope that helps a little bit. If it sounds like something you're interested in, be sure to stick around. If not, that's fine. There are plenty of uh, just regular horror stories on the channel. You can check those out as well. And as always, like last time when we did SCP, if you hear something like this, that means that that data has either been corrupted, redacted, or is blacked out. And I need a way to represent that. So that pretty much sums it up. I hope you all enjoy these SCPs. SCP-728 Safe 728 is to be kept within a Class 4 containment vault at Sector Wilson. To date, the item has shown no activity to warrant anything other than standard security procedures to prevent unauthorized access. 728 appears to be a standard shipping container. 12.19 meters by 2.44 meters by 2.90 meters. The exterior is painted red and shows some signs of weathering. Markings and marking and numbers on the exterior are consistent with the system used by <laughs> However, no such designation has ever been assigned to one of their containers. Analysis of the material used in constructing the container has found it to be made of terrestrial materials, though not in any combination usually associated with the construction of shipping containers. The interior space is consistent with that of a standard shipping container, with the exception that it is constantly at a comfortable temperature and light level for human occupation, despite no methods of heat regulation or lighting being present. When the doors are closed, the interior space experiences the flow of time differently from the outside world. The difference is neither consistent nor predictable, with the flow of time capable of both speeding up and slowing down, and in some cases apparently reversing. Any equipment which could be used to record the flow of time, such as stopwatches, will function normally within the container. However, upon opening the doors, such devices will suffer a catastrophic failure and completely cease to function, with all data being erased. This extends to all data recorded while the doors were closed, and so far, no medium has been found which can resist this effect, save for pen and paper. For this reason, the only reliable method to record the passage of time within 728 is through the use of for this reason, the only reliable method to record the passage of time within 728 is through the use of a human observer. 728 is vulnerable to damage as any object made from... However, perforating the container causes the primary effect to no longer function. Any damage inflicted upon 728 appears to undo itself after a random amount of time, possibly as a side effect of 728's ability. Experimentation Log 
experiments consisted of sealing a person or persons within 728, measuring how much time passed in the outside world, and comparing this to the subject's experience measured with a standard watch. June 7th, 2000. Doctor. Subject, D-7466. Time elapsed, five minutes. Subject experience, two hours. June 7th, 20. Doctor. Subject, D-7466. Time elapsed, one hour. Subject's experience, one minute, 30 seconds. June 7th, 20. Doctor. Subject, D-7466. Time elapsed, one hour. Subject's experience, not available. Researcher's note. Subject's body was found in a sitting position against the rear wall of 728, apparently mummified. Tests date the body to be approximately years old. Subject's hands were severely damaged with multiple fractures and lacerations. Subject's right leg was broken. An organic compound was found on the doors of 728, which was identified as June 7th, 20. Doctor. Subject D9558. Time elapsed one hour. Subject's experience not available. Researchers note When 728 was open, subject was no longer present. Testing is suspended for the day. June 10th. 20. Doctor. Subject D9558. Time elapsed 66 hours. Subject's experience not available. Researcher's note. When questioned as to how much time had passed, subject was adamant we'd never close the doors. June 10th. 20. Doctor. Subjects D9558, D8627, D4513. Time elapsed. One hour. Subjects experience not available. Researchers note. Subjects were interred within 728 with enough rations to last all three men five years, as well as a supply of notebooks and pens. Subjects were instructed to keep a record of their experiences while inside. When the container was opened, all three were found dead. Subjects 9558 and 4513 had both suffered severe beatings and apparently died from their injuries. Evidence suggests that their bodies had been disemboweled and subjected to acts of 8627 had died from disembowelment, apparently self-inflicted. The logs were apparently kept as specified for years before slowly degrading into unintelligible ranting. Similar writings were found on the walls of 728, written in the blood and the feces of all three subjects, although fingerprinting identified that 8627 was the only writer. Analysis of the feces found that in all three cases, it was most likely taken directly from... SCP-1394 Safe 1394 is to be kept in a standard security locker at Site-19. Subjects injected with 1394 should be confined to a testing room while asleep and should be kept at Site-19 afterward for further observation. Testing of 1394 has been halted temporarily. Consult interview D-1394-5-D for details. 
1394 is an ornate brass syringe dating to the early 1600s. When fully assembled, 1394 will fill with a saline solution at a rate of 1 milliliter per minute until full. When 1394 is used to inject this saline solution into a patient afflicted with a disease or condition, the subject will begin to sleepwalk four minutes after their next onset of REM sleep. The subject cannot be woken for the next 40 minutes and will wake upon the conclusion of this time period. While sleepwalking, subjects will experience a dream that accurately simulates their surrounding environment, except for the presence of various medications and medical devices in the vicinity. The subject reports involuntarily using these devices in the dream to perform a medical procedure on themselves with the intent to cure or alleviate the condition in question. The actions they describe correspond to the actions taken during sleepwalking. Medical procedures performed under 1394's influence only somewhat correspond to appropriate or real-life medical treatments and will often entail the use of medical implements whose function is unknown. Subjects who perform a medical procedure on themselves under 1394's influence experience a partial alleviation of the disease or condition, which typically entails the return of superficial functioning of the affected body part, despite the continuation of the ailment, as well as agnosia toward associated symptoms. See the testing log for further details. Experiment Log 1394A Subject D1394-1 Diagnosed with lung cancer in the left lung. 1394-1 reported self-administering anesthetic before performing a lobectomy in a medically appropriate, if drastically, accelerated fashion. Notably, the subject did not report any blood loss and no precautions were taken to prevent it. Results? Standard lung function is returned despite the presence of a tumor that would normally prevent lung function. Shortness of breath, fatigue, and chest pain were alleviated. Subject was unaware of his persistent cough and wheezing and attributed the interruptions in his speech to fits of narcolepsy. 1394-1 died four months later after the cancer metastasized in his other organs. Subject D1394-2 diagnosed with narcolepsy. 1394-2 reported using a needle to administer several injections of fine black sand into the eyeballs, forehead, and chest. This was described as uncomfortable and painful. The result? 1394-2 continues to experience narcolepsy. During periods of cataplexy associated with the condition, the subject will remain in an upright position despite the relaxation of the muscles. The force responsible for this has not been identified. 1394-2 will sleepwalk during daytime sleep and believes that her associated dreams are genuine, temporary changes to local reality. Subject D1394-3 Missing her upper left central incisor An appropriate dental implant was placed near 1394-3 prior to sleep. Procedure 1394-3 reported using the implant to replace the missing tooth, then sealing it in place with an unidentifiable blue adhesive. The implant was not used in reality. The results? 1394-3 was capable of biting and chewing as though the missing tooth was present, though the subject's speech remained mildly impaired. 1394-3 perceived the implant to be present and reported no change after it was actually implanted. Subject D1394-4, Missing Left Hand Procedure 1394-4 1394-4 reported immersing his left arm in a vat of cold, white, viscous liquid for roughly 40 minutes. Result With practice, 1394-4 was able to develop a form of telekinesis, roughly equivalent to a left hand of normal strength. The subject is capable of manipulating objects that are behind physical barriers and experiences no ill effects from handling harmful objects. 
This ability only functions if the subject is observing the item or items being manipulated. Interruptions caused by blinking typically result in the subject dropping any held items. The subject reports possessing a left hand made of an identified white solid. Subject D1394-5, blind since age 2. Procedure 1394-5 reported using a metal syringe to inject herself with a very hot liquid, then falling asleep 35 minutes later. Result 1394-5 remains in REM sleep, and all attempts to wake her have been ineffective. However, the subject's dreams closely resemble reality, and she is fully somnambulant, enabling communication with researchers. See interview log D-1394-5C for further information. Interview log The following interview was conducted with 1394-5, 17 hours after exposure to 1394, to assess medium-term consequences of her condition. Good evening, 1394-5. Mind if I sit here? Yeah, whatever. Dr. Braun sits opposite of 1394-5. First things first, are you still capable of sight? I guess. That's good to hear. Could you do me a favor? Sure. Dr. Braun puts 1394 on the table in front of D-1394-5. Could you pick this up and tell me whether it's the syringe you used in the dream? 1394-5 picks up 1394 and examines it with her hands. Yeah. Wait, this is the exact pattern it had. How did you get this? That's sort of a long story. Oh my god, am I still dreaming? Technically, yes, but 1394-5 becomes agitated. Fuck, what did you do to me? Please, calm down and let me... Wait, is this what you used on me yesterday, too? 1394-5 slams 1394 against the corner of the table repeatedly. 1394 experiences minor and consequential damage. Security personnel enter the room and restrain 1394-5, retrieving 1394. 1394-5's arm makes movements as if to continue this action. Now, if you would let me finish... You are dreaming, but your dreams are, or were, a very close match to reality. Do you understand? No, you can't make me. Nobody's making you do anything. I'm not using it again. Why would this fucking thing break? 1394-5, can you hear me? Why does it have to be me? I think we're done here. Security? What's in it for me? Why should I believe you? End log. 1394-5's dreams remain divergent from reality. The subject does not perceive any attempt to remove 1394 from her possession and believes that personnel are continually exhorting her to inject herself with 1394 for reasons that are currently unclear. 1394-5 has been retained indefinitely for further observation. Interview Log D-1394-5-D Two days following interview 1394-5-C, 1394-5 addressed a maintenance worker instructing him to locate Dr. Braun. The following interview took place upon Dr. Braun's arrival. I need you to repeat everything I'm saying to you. Sorry, what? Good. Can you hear me, 1394-5? You need to use it on someone more cooperative. This one isn't working. Sorry, what are you... All right, all right. Silence follows for 13 seconds. Keep going. We have so much to offer you. We left our medicine in your dreams for you. But you need to use SC... I mean the syringe on someone else. That 
That's right. She can't be the bridge between us if she won't come to us. Find someone else with no vision. Make them use the key three... Wait, hold up. Silence for 25 seconds. Are you still there? Oh my god, they can hear me, can't they? I'm talking in my sleep. How stupid do you think I am? Hey, listen, these guys aren't... 1394-5 begins to experience muscle spasms before opening her eyes and becoming rigid. No further communication was successful. 1394-5 remains in a fetal position. Attempts to alter her posture, including those involving heavy application of force, have failed. 1394-5 responds to visual stimuli, but exhibits no signs of consciousness. Samples indicate that 1394-5's blood contains 12% black sand by volume. A further attempt at communication by MTF Omicron Rho with the entities encountered has been proposed.